So um, 22 free marketing tools. Now there's some really cool things out, out there and I'm gonna try and attempt to go between screens onto the internet. Who knows how it will go, but we're gonna have a go. And um, there might be a few more than 22 and there are there, there is one or two I think that are paid for. Some might be freemium, which means a bit free and a bit premium. So clever, whoever invented that. So let's get going. Now this is important, okay? The most effective way to do it is to do it. And just like I was sharing about LinkedIn for ages, I've been on, I've had LinkedIn for ages um, and I have used it a bit, but I kept saying, right, so I'm gonna create a strategy. I'm going to start sharing on this. I'm gonna start doing this. And then I decided that actually the best way to do it is to do it. So I just started sharing and I didn't actually care about who saw my posts. I just thought this is authentic. This is something that's present for me at the moment and I'm gonna share it on LinkedIn. And so I just did it. And now I've had leads from there. I've had, had um, client calls. I've had people getting in contact just from doing it. So it's really, really effective, but you just need to do it. So anything I teach you today or you learn today just have a go. Don't wait for perfection. So I just wanted to remind you of that. So we're going to look at a few areas we're going to cover our idea generation, um, looking at building a website, content creation and design, marketing and productivity. So you would know idea generation. Incidentally, these slides are all created on Canva, which is a free tool, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and uh, Simon often does the three-day internet diploma and what happens is the coaches create their own slides and I remember I started creating my slides in Canva and his were always in PowerPoint and Keynote and everybody else's were and then I came along and I had very good slides and he was like your slides are putting everyone else to shame so there you go that's how to annoy Simon nothing I don't share on these calls right Google Trends let me know if you've ever used Google Trends in the comments, um, because it is a great way to find out what is trending at the moment. Obviously, the name is there now. Can you see that now? Can you see, does it say Google Trends on your screen? Because hopefully you can see the internet. Let's see, who's going to tell me if they can see that on their screen? Yes, perfect. Right, who can suggest a topic that we could search for. We can see a trend on it. I could start off with one. Think of a topic we can search. So for example, COVID, let's go with COVID. So here you go. So you can change the, um, you can change, so if we look for the past five years, okay? There you go. Zero, because it did not exist. And now it's going up, down, up, down, and the peak was here. Okay, so we can see, um, how the COVID curve has changed. Now, if you're researching a business, this is a really, really good tool to use because you can see what's going on. So we've got French Bulldogs. Okay, let's try French Bulldogs. So if you've got a business idea about French Bulldogs and you want to see if you want to start breeding them, like cockapoos. Everyone's into cockapoos at the moment. Um, I got a cockapoo before they were trendy, I'd like to say. Ah, oh, look at this, hey? It's kind of up and down, isn't it? There is, look at this peak here of dog ownership. So this, 2021, see more interest in French bulldogs. Now it's going down, they're out. So there you go. So you can have hours of fun on this. You can do lots of things. Relationships, is that, is that do you, is that, it's not very specific. Could you think of anything else? But what are those other things that children use? Um, uh what are they called fidget spinners let's have a look at those fidget spinners so you want to be looking for trends okay fidget spinners look at this that is interesting well not that interesting that's the last 12 months anyway i could get distracted with this but there you go look this is what happens with crazes they come in now they now the trick is to catch this this before it started peaking and now you see everybody had a fidget spinner and now it's gone down and it's very, very minimal. And then they have these things called poppets or something and you pop them 
if I could remember the name, I'd search for that. Loom bands, exactly. All of these things. So we'll do loom bands and then we'll move on. Otherwise, I'm really not going to get through these slides, am I? Loom bands. Let's have a look. Loom bands. Let's have a look over the past five years. There you go. Look, loom bands are you know, not too bad, actually. They did have a peak. But it's not a dead market. So there you go. Excellent. Um, yeah, they're just trends. They're not, not the percentage of people searching, no, but they're just trends. But anyway, so there is something that you can use to see what's going on in your market. I will, I will um, stop doing that because we could go on forever doing that. But actually, as I'm here, I'm going to tell you, this is a bonus one, a bonus thing. Google, if you use Chrome, one tab. So you know when you have all of the tabs open, let me know in the comments if you are someone who has tons of tabs. Normally I have about, I have a lot of tabs. I have a lot of tabs. So, oh yes, yes, see, look at this. I love you lot, you're just like me. So what happens is when you've got all these tabs open, you have this little extension here, it's a little blue, can you see in the corner, just a, oh, you can't see my face, but there's a little blue diamond. You click that and it takes all the tabs and it puts them into one place here. So this is 21 tabs open, 18 tabs open, 32, you know, like I have a lot of tabs open. And then if you want something from those tabs, you can just click on it and then it will open and it'll be back. So for example, if you do some work for a business and all your tabs are related to that work you're doing around that business or you're doing something on a topic, you could have all those tabs open and then close them and then come back to them and restore them all. You can also share those tabs with other people. So um, this is another bonus, squibbler.io. So this is to get you writing. So if you stop writing, you lose everything you've written. I was going to put it in the presentation, but I was like, I'm not telling you like that. It's mean. But now you've got it. So there you go. It's free. Yes, one tab is free. So get that downloaded. Best, to be honest, I think the whole presentation could just go around one tab. It's that good. Love it. Um, I don't know if it's just with Chrome. I did search it to show you, and it's, a, it's in the Chrome web, st web star version. I don't know, it doesn't say. I don't know, but there's probably other ones, but it's really, really good. So there you go. See all these bonuses. Google Alerts, we're going to do that. So Google Alerts. So you can put things in here like your name or um, say, for example, Twitter are doing ticketed spaces. So that means that every time that's mentioned on the internet, you'll get an email about it. So this is a really, um, yeah, it's one tab. You just Google one tab and it comes straight up on Google. <clears throat> so alerts, Google alerts, make sure you set this up for your name. So if someone's talking about you, if you're in a certain area, so if you want to hear what people are saying about loom bands, put in loom bands and then you will get an email through every time that someone mentions loom bands on the internet. Um, so that's good, make sure you do that for your own name. So that's Google Alerts. Okay, <clears throat> so um, exactly, Andrew, yes, one tab, the answer to what I've been agonizing over. What's that about trying to close down tabs? I don't know. Um, do you get millions of emails? Um, if my name was Beyonce, I'd probably get millions of emails, but because it's just me, I don't get that many emails. So I guess you could put them into a folder. It depends what you're getting searches for. I don't get millions of emails on my name. I don't know why. My children probably would say I should have lots of people searching for me, but I don't. Um, or losing tabs, yeah. I mean, one tab is the best thing. I should have just called the presentation one tab, to be honest. Okay, Google Alerts. Right, this is called, this is the next thing we're going to look at, and it's called Portent. So um, Portent um, is a way to generate content ideas. So I'm going to show you how it works. So, <laughs> thank you, Anwar, a legend. Excellent. So what's the subject? Right, what should we do? Give me a subject. Somebody give me a subject. I need a subject. I'm not going to go with community because it's boring. Health. It might, I don't know if that's going to be specific enough, but we could try health. Or should we do keto? Because that is, that is health, but it's a little bit smaller. Let's see. Generate ideas. So these are ideas for um, 
titles. So how not knowing ketos makes you a rookie. See, that one's rubbish. Where ketos are headed in the next five years. How a top model makes ketos work. And you can keep going. How to cheat at ketos. So there's something important, actually, and that is that um, if you don't do good titles, people will not even read what you're writing about. And so sometimes people think about the title as the last thing they're going to write, but actually it should be the most important thing that you write. So if you're writing anything, always start with a good title. Language lessons. 11 reasons language lessons are snarkier, snarkier than Oscar Wilde. Snarkier, what kind of word's that? It's an American word, snarkier. I don't know. Um, is it just for headline ideas? I think so, yeah, I think so. I haven't used this one. There is another one that's coming up which is much better than this, but this is one for stuff. Anyway, I like the word snarkier. How to make language lessons as fierce as RuPaul. This is def <laughs> definitely American. Is RuPaul some kind of model type thing? I don't know. How language lessons could make anyone a better parent. But the thing is, is it's about getting that intrigue. There is a view, view tutorial here. There's all kinds of things here. Refine your content. Seems to do lots of things, to be honest. So it's the weekend. So there we go. How to train your puppy to be clean. We'll do one more. Okay. How to train your puppy to be clean. Okay, do you know the idea? When, how to train your puppy to be clean, send, oh my gosh, this is not good. What the aim, oh my gosh, no. So you have to be careful with these tools, don't you? Five reasons how to train your puppy to be clean could help you win your favorite reality show. Right, so. <laughs> It's always a risk when you decide to do a, a webinar of this kind, isn't there? I was putting these slides together and I clicked on one link and it did not link to where it should have linked to. That's all I'm saying. I was like, oh my gosh, is that gonna infect my computer now? When I'm on the call, are people gonna think I'm searching for those things? Um, which platform is this? Which platform is the one I was just talking about was Portent, or what are we on now? We're on Zoom now, so I don't know, Christopher. Sorry you got logged out. Although yesterday I run my call, my community, and I got logged out of the whole thing. Uh, luckily, someone was able to carry it on for me. So if you are trying to generate ideas and do these kind of spider Grams Coggolet is an example where you can kind of get creative on there. <clears throat> so I can play this little video and she can explain it to you. Hi, welcome to Coggle. Coggle is a great way to understand, organize, and share information on any topic with colleagues, classmates, or just on your own. Let's sign in and create a new diagram. Click the central item to edit the title. I'm going to use this diagram to plan an awesome new business idea. Use the plus buttons to add branches. You can add as many as you need. Click on text to edit it or drag an item to move it around. The structure of the diagram helps to keep your ideas organized. Right click on an item to open the context menu. Here you can change its color, remove it, and all sorts of other useful things. After you've added some items, try inviting someone to edit with you. You'll see their changes appear instantly as they make them. And you can discuss your project right here in the messages panel, making it really easy to work on anything together. Your diagrams are saved automatically. When you're done, click the Coggle logo in the top left corner to go back to your homepage, where you'll see everything you've created so far. Log in now to get started and find out why a million people have chosen Coggle to organize their ideas. So that is Coggle. So you can use that. I also, I use MindNode, which is another alternative. And um, I have used, for many years, I used, um, I think it's at the top of here, mind mapping. I think it was mind, I can't remember what it's called. I'm not going to go into it, but that's a couple of 
but there's quite a few of them. So if you kind of like to work in that way, then have a go at, um, well, have a look at Coggle. Or you can do it manually, but it is quite a good way to organise stuff. Does anybody else do mind mapping? Does anyone like mind mapping? Right, so I think that's a free one to do. Yes, mind mapping. You always feel really organised, don't you, when you're doing some mind mapping? Okay, so, okay, let's get on to this one. Researching your audience. Has anybody used Answer the Public? I like Answer the Public. The downside of Answer the Public is you get three searches a day. You used to get unlimited, but it is really, really good. So who, we need something good. We need a topic, brand or product, one, two, one or two words for best results. So we need to be good. Let's think of a good topic. So who's going to give me a good topic? Give me a topic idea. We could go back to keto. Let's see. Zen gardens. Oh, that's a good one. This is why I like to ask. For, uh, that's why I like to ask for topic ideas. Zen gardens. Let's see. Search. Let's see what they're going to say about this one. Let's see if we get some good results. So, or we could try weight loss. It's good if you get it really. Um, when you're doing stuff, if you get it really um, niche, you sometimes get better results. The Zen gardens are thinking about it. House extension design. <laughs> Anthony says, portent's hilarious, mostly useless. There we go. Did you enjoy the webinar? Yes. Claire shared with us mostly useless information. Perfect. So we've got... So people are asking where. So this is really good if you are writing blogs and you write them about Zen gardens. So you can look on this little graph thing and it will tell you things that people are searching for. So where do Zen gardens originate from? Where to buy Zen gardens? How do Zen gardens work? How are Zen gardens relaxing? So there's lots and lots and lots of ideas. Why? Do I like Zen gardens? That one's not so good. So you've obviously got to go through and search them. You can save this as well. So Zen gardens are for, or what else? Zen gardens around the world, all kinds of things. And then um, this is kind of giving you some other ideas. It's all really good for topic ideas and for writing stuff. Zen gardens in Florida, Zen gardens in London. This is what people are asking. And then you get some more here. So um, all kinds of things around Zen gardens. May you have a copy of the wheel. This wheel that I just made, you can do it yourself. I don't think I think I think it's going to be complicated for me to send you the copy for me to send it you, I think. Because all you need to do is go to answer the public, type in Zen gardens and you can have your own wheel. And if you do it yourself, I mean I could try Save image. There you go, it's saving it. I don't know where it's going to save it to. I've saved it. I could, I could screenshot it, but then I need to send it to you. But you want to do it for your topic. I have saved it. I don't know why I've saved it now, though. Um, yeah, so anyway, I've got the whole thing saved, and then you can do whatever you want with it. So this is a good thing to do. I don't know if I can pull this into here. Let's see. Does that work? There you go, screenshot. Who knows if that's worked, but there you go, put it in there if you want that. But anyway, this is a good tool. So you can see what people are talking about. Zen gardens is, is an interesting topic, but there we go. Okay, so um, how to grow your own food. Should we try that one? Or house extension design. Should we try that one? The thing is, is I think, the best thing to do is, is to have the question. So what, well, let's see, let's see, house extensions. House extension design. Oh, that's not how you spell it, spell extension, X. Right, okay. Let's see what this comes up with. So you can do three searches a day on here. If you've got other friends who live in other houses, you go to their house and do three more. You could spend your whole day finding friends with computers. 
house extension design, house, house extension design in the Philippines. I think it, you have to really think about your topic and how you put it in. So, yeah, it hasn't really come up with very good stuff on this. Beautiful house extension design. Anyway, you can lose hours on here, but you get the idea. So that is Answer the Public. Very good for researching what people are searching on the internet for. Combine that with Google Trends and other things, then that is um, a way to go forward. So, okay. Platforms to help you build a website. So who on here doesn't have a website? If you don't have a website, let me know. Um, probably most people do have a website. So there's different ways to build websites and get a website. Um, you, if you want to build a website, um, there's two WordPresses, wordpress.org, which is the web software that you can use to create your own website or your blog or an app. Or you can go onto wordpress.com and you can create your free website. So they have websites on there as opposed to you building it manually yourself. I think that's probably the easiest way of defining the difference between the two. So if you want the easy option, it's wordpress.com. If you're building a, a proper website that you want all different kinds of functionality and design and all the rest of it, you get much more um, scope using wordpress.org, um, but you'll need to get hosting and all those kind of things, whereas wordpress.com will host it for you. The other alternative is Wix. So you can just start building a website um, on Wix. Again, these are not free, um, but you can, um, um, yeah, and that's another thing actually, Christine says about using GoDaddy. I haven't done this, but if you buy your website domain through GoDaddy, I think you can click a box and it says, you can create your website through GoDaddy. Um, and they are good 24 seven. Although they took, uh, they renewed some domains I didn't want to renew and I had to ring last Saturday night, I was ringing because you couldn't do it any other way. It took ages, I spoke to a lady in America, but she did, it was Saturday night. Um, yeah, WordPress is free, that's right. A lot, of, a lot of themes are free as well, but if you are setting up your own WordPress site um, on wordpress.org, you have to have hosting. So you have to host your website somewhere and pay for that. So. Um, Simon used to recommend HostGator um, to do that. Um, I think maybe there's Bluehost. I haven't done it for a long time. So um, yes, things like ClickFunnels and Groove, um, what's it called? Groove something, Groove, not called, it's called something else, isn't it? Groove something. Um, you can create landing pages and all sorts. So um, yeah. Be careful anyway, like Andrew says, everything, they get you in for a cheap price and then it's like your domain name, it's 99p the first year and the next year it's very expensive. So Groove Funnels, that's it, yeah, Groove Funnels. So um, you can build a website on Wix, um, which is more drag and drop, that kind of thing. WordPress is said to have better in terms of search engine optimization, that kind of thing. But sometimes if you can't, if, I spent a long time building websites. I've told you, I think I told you this before, didn't I? About the time I <laughs> built a, a website about Halloween. It took me a long time and then Halloween was one day. Sad times. But anyway, so <laughs> if you're just trying to get going online, get a Wix website if you want to, just to get going and then you can change it. Um, so uh, would I recommend Squarespace? Yeah, everything, like just go with it. I mean, my sister built a really successful business and she, hers was on Wix, still is on Wix in fact, and it's taken a lot of money. So, um, so it doesn't mean you can't have a successful business if you don't use WordPress. So yes, Wix, there's lots of different ones, go with what you want. Um, and has anyone used Heroic now? I've not heard of that one. There's lots of different ones. Uh, the one that I always recommend um, is Kajabi. It's not cheap, but it does include everything. Um, it does include everything. Um, and if you go to my website, claireperidouise.com, and go to resources, you can't get this on the, through them. You only get a 14-day trial. But if you go on here, 
you can start a 30 day trial. So you get 30 days on Kajabi instead of um, 14. But you can now host podcasts on there. It manages your email list. You have your website. You can build a website on there. Um, you can take payments on there. I run my membership through there. Um, so it is more expensive. But when I was starting out, I had lots and lots and lots of different platform things I was paying for. And you can build pipelines, which take people through a whole process. Um, so from signing up on your website to the emails going out, to then purchasing, to follow-ups, you can host online courses on there. You can do everything in Kajabi. So um, there's lots of options. And yeah, if you go onto my website and look at resources, I'm recommending some resources that I'm talking about today. So Google Drive, does anybody else use Google Drive? Google Drive, um, I use it. Simon uses it. The Internet Business School uses it. Um, a lot of other entrepreneurs I know use it. It's easy to share through there. Everything's saved in the draw in the cloud. Um, so yeah, and it's great for pictures actually as well. So um, I use Google Drive. Um, we're going to talk about some of the more some of the other ones in a moment. So they are not. So WordPress is free. The rest aren't free, but there's some ideas. Um, website websites for startups.co.uk so there's another example thank you paul um so it's all different ones just go with one so here are some website tools you can use so if you found someone's website and you thought that was really good and you worked out that it was a wordpress website which you can quite often do by right clicking and you can look at the code in the back and i don't know if you've been taught that before so if you do if you do this, how do you do it? View page source. And then it comes up, well, not on this one particularly, because that I'm on the landing page, but then it will tell you at the background, you can see if it says WP and if it's a WordPress theme. So you can put in, does anybody here have a WordPress website or can recommend one? <clears throat> and we could put and we can find out which theme you're using. Anybody have one? Uh, I don't know if that's a WordPress website. I know that, for example, say, for example, Amy, Amy Porterfield, she uses, um, she's a, she is a uh, marketer and she uses Kajabi, but she also has a WordPress website. And so you can see here, you can see that it's a custom WordPress theme designed by this person, developed by this person. And so if you like someone's website and how it looks, you could look on there, you can see which plugins they're using on that website um, and kind of do some research. So that is a good thing for doing that. Um, there's lots of free themes, yeah. So um, that's about WordPress themes. Okay, Let's see, page speeds. So you can go onto this website, pagespeed.web.development, blah, 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 blah and test how fast your website is. I'll put that in here because you're never going to be able to remember that. Um, and then put in your website and analyze how quick it is. So that's that, because obviously if it's really slow loading, people lose interest and go and do something else. We have zero tolerance for slowness as a society, I think. So, um, Typeform. Has anybody used Typeform? Typeform is, that's okay. You're late. Why are you late, Andrew? I thought you were here earlier. You're not late. Um, typeform. So this is, you can make really nice forms on here, funnily enough. That's why they called it Typeform. Surveys and quizzes. And so it looks nice. You can do all kinds of fancy things with this. Um, so if you want to create forms, if you don't want to have them this fancy looking, you can just use Google Forms and create simple ones for free, because this, this presentation is all about free. free. So here you go, free online form generator. So you can create, go onto Google Form, and you can create a little survey for your audience. So um, that is Typeform. So always good to find out what your audience is, or maybe if someone's bought from you, you can do a follow up, or maybe you want to put on a, an event um, and you want to know whether people 
uh, what they'd like from the event or any of those questions, you can create a little form. So that is time form. So, okay, more time here. One of those things, probably like portent. You can go on these websites um, and generate business names. So this is my free guide. Um, that's another Andrew. Oh, I'm sorry, Andrew. <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm glad it's useful. And I'm sorry I got you confused with the other Andrew. So um, and I didn't know you were late. I just didn't notice. I wish I could talk to you all. It's so not fun talking to yourself. So slogan name generator. So I click on this one. And you can enter a word that you want your slogan to include. So if you want your slogan to include, uh, what did we have? I had some examples. I don't think I used them all. Uh, what did we have? We had, I can't, we've got so much stuff in the chat, I can't remember. What about keto? I remember keto. Okay, generate slogans. Keto, the smart choice. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what keto it is. There you go. <laughs> Hours of fun, everybody. You're going to thank me for the rest of the weekend. You're going to be on here. Business name generator, namelix.com. So this uses artificial intelligence to generate words for your business. So let's try. So Serena says, Learn Dutch. Generate a short, so it says enter keywords. Uh, learn Dutch. I don't know if it's going to work. Let's see. Let's see what it's going to say. Short names. Right, we're going to have short names. Let's see if we can think of an amazing name. Grockwell, Fast Teach. See, then they give you loads of examples. Learn Vault. So you can spend ages on these things trying to learn like you can have misspellings like person's names real words you can just have so much fun here yeah. there you go i don't know if learn dutch was helpful um, in terms of this business name generator so if we think about what else um so let's do community business and culture Let's do medium names, generate. Let's see what that generates. Socioculture, community, culture starter. You get the idea. Hours of fun, everybody. If you want a new business name. These, these tools are actually really fun. I know, I know. So <laughs> name check, okay? Name check allows you to see if the domain is still available that you want. So you can pop it in there and it will say if it's still um, available. So I don't know, keto forever. See if it's still available. No one would have bought that, would they? Let's see. There we go. Oh, ketoforever.com's registered, but the rest aren't. Look, you get usernames. It tells you so much stuff on this website. Ah. Oh. She's getting slightly delirious with all this, all this. I hope somebody uses something from here. Um, and link shortener. So link shortening is good because if you say, say you wanted to share a link with somebody, you can see how many people have clicked on that link and you can use bit.ly. So it'll make a long thing into a short thing. So if I was going to share, say about my Kajabi link, I have got a link, but it's bit.ly forward slash maybe it's Kajabi 30 or something like that. So it's easier to share with people than it is if you tell them the whole long one. So that's Bitly. So that is that. Let's see what else we've got coming up. Um, yeah, you can use it for affiliate links because it makes them shorter and then you can track. So if you, um, uh, I'm laughing because it sounds like a massive bang then. My, my daughter had a netball hoop yesterday. It sounds like she's using it. it sounds like it's just come through the window to be honest. Um, yeah, so you can um, then track. So say I gave you a link on this call and I wanted to know if all the leads are generated from this call, I better track that link. So yes, you can. Okay, content creation and design. So if you're designing content, use Canva because that's free. Um, and um, 
you can do things and it's amazing. You can, there's an upgraded version, you get a few other extra bits and pieces, um, like different photos. And if you want to take the background out of a photo, you could do that. There is a, um, an app that you can have on your computer, which makes it quicker to go to. So um, rather than going to the website every time. Um, so I have Canva on my computer. Um, who uses Canva? Anybody use Canva? There are other ones as well. You obviously can use ones like Adobe, Photoshop and all that. Canva. Yeah, Canva is the best. All my stuff's created on Canva. All my social media um, presentations. Um, you can do brochures. You can do so much stuff on Canva. So yeah, Canva is amazing. And I think even if you pay for it, it's $9.99 um, a month. So it's not really expensive. Yeah. Um, colours or coolers. I don't know how you pronounce it. But if you're doing, and I've done this before, you want to get a new um, color scheme, you can use this to generate color schemes. Um, and um, I wonder if I'm signed into it. Yes. So if you want to create a new palette, it's going to let me in. Maybe we could just start the generator without logging in. Let's see. See, what did I say to you about people being impatient? Did I say that to you? So impatient, just trying to open. So you can go on here and you can press the space bar and it will generate different colors. So then you can, and if you decide you like one of the colors, hold on, it's me being impatient, right. So you decide, right, this is the red for me. For you, you can't see this, but I have lots of boxes open on the screen. You can lock it. And then you can keep pressing the space bar and say, oh, actually, I like the blue and the red. And you keep going through, you can get the whole colour palette. Hours of fun. And then when you've got it, you can export it. And you can save it as a PDF. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't think this has gone too badly, to be honest, so that I'm flicking around on screens. And you can save it and then we can use the codes and put them into Canva. So there you go. If you need a new color scheme, use that and you can do all your branding or you could do it for other people. You could have a whole business generating branding and color schemes. So that is an option for that. Okay, what was the other one on here? Pexels. So Pexels is for copyright free images. So make sure if you're using images on the internet, they're copyright free ones, or you just go and you um, so you can just find different ones here, download them for free. It's nice, actually, if someone's um, taken the picture, you can um, highlight that it's their picture in your stuff. So um, if you're doing a blog, say, on LinkedIn or something like that, you, I have been quoting that whose picture it is. But you can use Pexels or just type in to your search bar, copyright free images. And there's lots of other ones as well you can use as well. Unsplash. Um, Pixabay, all sorts. So that's my recommendation, one of those. So that's designing content. Now, has anybody used Loom before? Um, it's a really good way. So if, for example, you're working with somebody or you are wanting to um, record an online course and you want something to record your screen, Loom all the time, Andrew, excellent. So Loom, records your screen. So you can say, what I want you to do is, I need you to go to this Google document and do X, Y, and Z, click here. And you can just do a whole little screen and then you just send it easily. Um, and it just goes in an email just via a link. Or if you want to record um, a presentation, you can make it in Canva, record it with Loom, and then, um, um, send it to whoever you want to see it, send it to. So it's here is their demonstration. So basically it's instantly sharing and watching um, things that you've, you've created. So it's just easy. So it comes up in your, in your email inbox and you can just um, see like their little video. So it's an easy way to communicate with people. You can have your face on there or you can have it not on there. It's just sometimes easier if you see things visually. So. Yes, I think I looked at that actually. Yeah, I've upgraded. I think it's $7.99 a month. You get 25 videos with the free version, which actually might be enough for most people. But yeah, if you want more, but Loom is good. Yeah, excellent. I'm glad you've used that before. Okay, let's see. 
Okay, so more here. I'm gonna to have to stop giving you such extensive showing you of these, otherwise we'll never get through. Blog topic generator. So if you're stuck about what to write on a blog, you can go in here, you can put in a topic um, about um, say swimming. Give me blog ideas. Swimming expectations versus reality. Swimming expectations versus reality. So you see, it's kind of, it just thinks you have a different perspective that maybe you haven't thought about before. I'll put the link in the, in the thing so you can see it. Um, will swimming ever rule the world? The next, best, next best thing, the next big thing is swimming. Swimming explained in fewer than 140 characters. So you can use this to think about different um, blog ideas if you're doing um, a blog. Um, and how you create content that's different from everybody else's. So always worth exploring. Um, Copyscape um, is to check that the um, you haven't been plagiarized or if you're using some content, see where it is on the web. So just use Copyscape to check that it hasn't been used elsewhere. And um, something that I really like is copy.ai. Now this used to be paid for, and now it is free. And it's really great because it has lots, it creates stuff using AI, artificial intelligence. Um, and um, it can give you kind of outlines of things if you're brainstorming or um, uh, I would definitely recommend you signed up to this because you can create captions on Instagram. Um, brainstorm topic i mean it does so much stuff i was trying to think of which one facebook headlines it does so many things so uh website copy let's have a look so if you want to say for example we'll skip this but when you get someone come to your website you want something that's going to um speak to them straight away so if you describe your pro product so um so what's it say What's the product going to be? Um, I don't know, LinkedIn training, LinkedIn training for entrepreneurs. And then you can choose um, what tone you want, whether you want friendly, luxury, relaxed, professional, bold, adventurous, witty. So we'll just go with friendly. Create copy. Um, short input, try to, oh, more details. LinkedIn training for entrepreneurs who live busy lifestyles but want to build great relationships. Okay, create copy. Okay, and then this will start creating copy. Um, so you can start reading LinkedIn training for entrepreneurs. I could have written that myself. We help you connect with the right people and build great relationships. So these would be the, the headlines on your um, website because we're in that section, so make more. So if you quite like that one, welcoming Gen Z to college on Snapchat, isn't it? We can actually the right people. So obviously it comes up with lots of different ones and you need to be putting in what you want to do. Work smarter, network better, cultivate your personal brand. It will do so many different things, this will. Um, it will create your bio. I mean, we're running out of time really to go into all of these things, but it does a lot. Um, I would definitely recommend using it. Instagram captions, let's see, create copy. You can't build great relationships without showing up. Train here to feel less frazzled and more focused so you can show up everywhere with a smile on your face. So when you get into this, it really can help you. It can help you write blogs. It will do it by AI and then you can add your bits in. Um, I mean, it does, too much. it does too much for me to even tell you, but you can see, hopefully, hopefully that helps. Um, it is pretty cool, but it's pretty big as well to explain. So hopefully that's giving you a little bit of an idea. Um, you can see down the side how many different things, Google descriptions, event copy, there's a lot on here. So I definitely recommend checking that out, copy.ai. Um, the session's recorded, definitely, John. Um, I don't know if it goes out or not. It's probably going to be on the YouTube channel, I would imagine. Um, but you can always email Internet Business School 
office at gmail.com and they will be able to answer that for you. Um, okay, why stamp for email marketing? That creates nice fancy signatures at the bottom of your emails so you can have links to um, your social media um, you can have your picture all of those kind of things I use Y stamp so if you've ever had an email from me that's how I do it MailChimp is um, great for building an email list and you can do that um, for free using MailChimp up to a certain amount now if you're using something like Kajabi you wouldn't need MailChimp because that has that inbuilt to it so there's MailChimp that's something else I'd, I'd recommend Okay, um, oh, productivity. Okay. It's not as fancy as having it on my presentation, is it like this, scrolling through this PDF bar. So like, how am I gonna go to all my links without doing it this way? So this is the last section we're gonna look at, and then we're gonna move over to D, which is exciting. I'm really excited to hear about how stuff about LinkedIn. So productivity, I've always used Evernote. Um, it's a note-taking, application pretty much but it's it's very extensive who has anybody else used Evernote it's um it's a free version you can do things like if you're looking and you're searching and then you see something interesting you can clip it and send it automatically to Evernote you can do to-dos in there um my Evernote's massive it's got so much stuff in it um so Evernote is a really good resource um, to keep all your notes together online and it can link to your phone as well and you can take a picture and say for example you take a picture of some notes you can then search for those notes within Evernote so it's really good. Um, um, Google Drive like I said super good organize and share all your files you can do spreadsheets and um, photos and everything and it goes across all of your devices and can be shared really easily. Um, Trello um trello is good as well um it's a visual so here you go you can see it's a visual so you can move things easily from column to column um and have different let me show you i've got trello oh, let's have a look oh actually if i open this i don't think you're going to see this can you see that can you see my trello board I don't think you will be able to see it because I haven't. No, you can't see it. Okay. I won't go into sharing that, but basically that's how it looks. Um, and you can organize projects visually. And um, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I don't even need to say I haven't got COVID because you're not near me. And I haven't got COVID. I'm just saying. Anyway, Trello, super good. You can organize and feel very organized with Trello. Thank you, Danita. That's very kind, goodness me. I, um, so yeah, Trello, that's Trello. And what was the other one I was gonna tell you? Oh, actually Basecamp. So Basecamp is project planning, but, and they kind of remarket it as, as an all-in-one toolkit for working remotely. But I use the free version just for me. You can have three projects. So I have like my own project and then, um, someone I consult for I have their their kind of project as their own one and then I have another one I think for ideas and I just like it it's kind of it looks it's easy to use because there's lots of project management tools uh, Monday for example uh, is another one um, but I like Basecamp it's kind of uh, I don't know I just like it it's simple I think that's why I like it um, so yeah, Basecamp is how I manage my projects um, and it can give you reminders and you can share things with other people in your team as well if you want to. Excellent. Um, so I think that's all of my, my script. I think that's I've shared everything. I think so. Definitely check out copy.ai. I know I didn't really have much time to go over it. Um, yeah, Andrew says, they're all fantastic and keep you focused. They do. They're really good. I really like Evernote. I've had that for years and years and years. So Asana, that's another one. Thank you, Paul. Um, yeah. Yeah. If you use Microsoft 365, then you automatically get OneDrive, which is an alternative. Yeah. The thing is, you just go with your stuff. Like if, if you use Google, use Google Drive. If you use Microsoft, use OneDrive. Um, if you are... Um, an Apple user, you have all kinds of 
different things that you don't have if you're Android. So use what works for you. But like I said at the beginning of the presentation, it's like all of this stuff's amazing, but you just got to do something, even if you haven't got a project. You know, I said about LinkedIn, I just started sharing on LinkedIn um, just because I wanted to get going with it. So just get going with something. Um, um, so just give your questions. Ellie says, your friend wants to start working as an entrepreneur. He said, can he start as a sole trader and what other advice can you give him? In any bank, would you recommend as you're selling PLR as well? Um, well, I, I can't really give advice as such. I can only share my experience. Um, when I started, um, I mean, you can start as a, you can start as self-employed and then go on and become a limited a limited company later on um, best to speak to an accountant who can advise you with your circumstances your friend in terms of banks all I can say from my experience is I used to be with NatNest and then NatWest basically paid me to leave because I think there was something going on where they had to I think it was something to do with open competition or something so they had to make they had to get so they kept writing to me saying we'll pay you to leave so I now with Starling and Starling are brilliant. I really like it. It's all app based. Um, you can have saving spaces within your business bank, bank account as well. So I love Starling. So that's just my experience of that. So speak to your accountant. Um, but yeah, you can start as a sole trader and then go from there. So if you start a limited company, then you've got all the limited company issues to deal with straight off. So um, a different free tool for shopping if people do internet shopping in Microsoft Edge browser who look for discount vouchers. Ah, is that, I don't know if you shared that, but thank you, Ankuri. That's good. I always like a discount voucher. Always look for one. Um, I know, pay to leave. You can't believe it. I didn't believe it for ages. Like, let's get writing. If you leave, you might get 2,000, I think it was 1,500 or 2,000 pounds for going to a new bank account. I'm like, why are not West trying to make me leave? I didn't want to leave. And now I'm so glad I left. And I got the 2,000 pounds or 1,500, I can't remember. It was a lot, it was a lot. I was like, this has got to be a scam. Anyway. Um, um, right. But it is best to go into business with a partner to share the load and have a balance. Yeah, if you can get if you can get into partnership, to be honest, whatever you do, there's always fours and against. So um, if you're doing it yourself, at least you are in control. But it is good to have a partner of some kind or an accountability partner. So um, thank you for engaging with me today. Um, hopefully that has given you a few ideas for things you can do for free. Um, hopefully it worked OK because I was flashing around trying to do explanations as well. Thank you, Hazel, that's kind. Um, yes, yeah, so if you have other topics you want me to talk about, I will see you next month, um, if not before. And um, yeah, so that's my, my session over.